Hello and welcome to the Ryanet Secrets of Brush Design with Corel Draw Training Series. My name is Tom Knight from AdvancedArtist.com and AdvancedT-Shirts.com and this series I'll be taking you through working with brushes in Corel Draw. Brushes are a very powerful design functionality available in Corel Draw and in this series we'll be working with the Ryanet Corel Draw Brushes Pack which has over 800 custom developed brushes specifically for Corel Draw, covering a wide range of media assets. This entire design that you see here with the exception of the skull was actually created with brushes and the text also. The effects in the text was created with brushes. The metallic looking wings were created with brushes. And this design was really created in a matter of minutes but yet you can see we've got a very nice look with all the different effects going on coming out of the brushes. In this particular session, getting started here, I just want to lay a foundation for what brushes are and what is the difference between brushes and clip art and static art. When I start referring to static art, I'm actually talking about clip art, art that's just not interactive. But when we take that art and convert it to brushes, it becomes interactive. That piece of art becomes very flexible. You can form it and shape it, change its size, and really use it to make your artwork or your design work flow with your design far more easily than working with static clip art. For example, if we take a look at this rose stem here, we've got a very thorny rose stem with four different flowers on it here. Being a piece of static clip art, it's basically just straight up and down. I can rotate it and I can resize it and do some different things with it as an object in Corel. But if I take this and convert it to a brush, I can do so much more with it than what I can do with a piece of static clip art. Now, there's a lot of secrets to converting objects to brushes and you really need to know what you're doing to do that. But We'll go ahead and start with this simple rose. The first thing that we want to do is take this rose. I'll go ahead, left click, select that, right click with my right mouse button one time. You'll see that plus symbol appear, and I'll duplicate this over here to the right. Now, when I'm creating brushes, I want them to go from the left to the right horizontally. So I'm going to go ahead, hold down my control to constrain my rotation, and set this rose up so that it is horizontally aligned with my page. Next thing I'm going to do is make a brush out of this. So I'm going to go to Window. I'm going to go to Dockers. I'm going to come down here to Artistic Media. And once that Docker is open, all I'm going to do is just left click this rose, drag it into that Docker right here where you see these pen strokes. You can see that plus symbol show up next to my cursor. Release that and I'm going to save this. I'm going to save this as Rose 1. And I'm going to select Save and I'll go ahead and replace that. Now I'm going to want to mirror this because I don't want all of my brush shapes to be going the same direction. If I'm going to work with this rose, I might want to use two brush strokes together, but I want my flowers to kind of be going in a different direction. So I'll go ahead and duplicate that again. I'm going to mirror that. I'll left click, drag that over here to my artistic media docker again, release, and we'll call this rose two. And I'll go ahead and replace that. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to take these roses and I want to form them around this skull to create an effect around this skull. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this skull over here to the right hand side. And I'll go ahead and resize this just a bit. Next thing I want to do, I've created those brushes. I'm going to come over here to my toolbar. I'm going to come down here to my freehand tool. Left click on that little icon, that little corner icon down in the right hand corner and come down here to my artistic media and my artistic media docker will come up. Well, right now it's set to presets. That's not what I want. I want to click on brush. Now what I want to do is make sure that I have nothing selected when I start working with brushes because if I have this selected and I click on a brush, it's going to apply that brush to all the vector strokes in this object. I don't want to do that. That might lock Corel up. So I'm going to click off, make sure I have nothing selected. Come down here. I know that these two here are my brushes because I can't see these outlines because these are just outlines for these roses. So I know that that's those two down here. Go ahead and select one of those, and we'll zoom in here on our skull. I'm just going to start down here at the bottom, just kind of form this to the shape of my skull. Maybe I'm going to go something like this right here and let that render. Now you can see now I've got that rose set in there, but it's too thin. It doesn't look right. But if you know how to work with brushes, which we'll cover this in the training series, I can come up here in the properties bar to my artistic media tool width and bring that up. We'll bring that up to say 2. And now you can see that's actually a little too big, but there's the shape of my roses. I want to bring that down just a little bit. Let's try 1.6. And that actually looks pretty good. Now if I zoom out just a little, and we'll zoom in here so we've got our skull right in the center, you can see 
how that piece of static clip art functioning as a brush was now formed into my design. Now if I want to start really adding some different rose looks here, I'll click off, click on, and I could bring another rose look in here. I might want to come in something like this here, come back up here this way behind there, and there's another set of that same rose. Now you can see I've got these two flowers going the same way, and that's why I created two sets because I don't want to have my flowers all lined up. I want it to look a little bit different. Simply come down here, click on my other rose, which I know is right here, and now I've got a different flow going on with my flowers. Now once this is set up as a brush stroke in draw, if I want to edit this, all I need to do is double click on it, and I've got these line segments and nodes I can work with just like the vector objects in draw to tweak the shape of my stroke to what I'm looking for with my art. Now you can see that this is a true departure from working with static art or clip art in designing with media that's very flexible, which is going to unleash me to create all kinds of different flows and have all kinds of control with that piece of art that I don't have when I'm dealing with static art. Brushes have really revolutionized the way in which I work because now I can do things very quickly and very easily and change the flow of things and adjust them and tweak them and create all these off-the-wall effects and looks very easily and very quickly with a lot of control through the brushes. Now I can see that I've got some different things going on here. We'll take this and bring this over this way. And we can bring this down this way and I'll bring this back up, up across the top here. Now at this point if I want to, let's say I want this to be behind the skull, make it look like the skull is kind of coming out of the roses or intermingled with the roses. I can go ahead and right click on this, select order and go to back of page. It's going to send that to a different letter, le layer, but there we go. Now we've got that set up there. Now let's say on the other side of the skull here, I want to have some other roses. All I need to do then, just to balance this off a little bit, is just come in this way here and flow that one right up that way there. Not happy with that. I can go and tweak that, or I can just hit Control Z, and let's say we want to start down here, and then come up this way here like that. Something like that right there. And then let's say I want to bring in one more stroke, which is going to kind of balance what's going on with here. Going on here, have two strokes to balance the design, the skull. I can bring, say, one another one down here, and then come up back up this way, just like that. And this one I'll want to mirror so that my flowers aren't all lined up. So I'll go back to my other stroke that was mirrored here, and that'll invert that out the other way. Now I'll simply go to my pick tool. I've got this one selected. I'll hold down shift, select the other stroke, right click, order, and to back of page. It's going to be another layer. That's fine. Now, now it looks kind of like my skull is coming out of or mixed with my roses. Now let's say I want to create a feather look to go with this. So I can come over here. I'll go ahead and lasso this feather. And I'll go ahead and make this horizontal also. I'll drag this over here into my docker. Select brushes and we'll call this feather and I'll select save. Yes, we'll go ahead and replace that. Now if I want to start adding some wings type look to my design coming off of one feather, I can go here to my artistic media tool, come up here to my feather right here, click on that and we go ahead and left click and start making a feather look very easily. Now that's too big, I want that to be smaller. But you can see the flexibility we have to create the types of designs and looks that we see very popular in the market today, working with these feathers and brushes and different things in Corel Draw. Now the brush pack comes with over 800 pre-made brushes with covering all kinds of different topics, very much in keeping this type of stuff we're seeing as effects on our designs in the modern apparel industry at this time. But I'm going to go ahead and left click here and start creating a wing look to go up this way like this to come off of this design. And I'm working with a mouse. You could also work with a pen or a tablet, but you can see I'm very easily able to come in here and just create a very nice feather look for this design very easily working with these feather brushes that we set up and draw. Now if these are too big down here at the bottom, I can go down here and tweak these and make them a little bit smaller. We'll do the same thing here. And if I want to go back and straighten out some of what's going on with the nodes, I'll go ahead and click these nodes and we'll release that and bring this out this way. And you can see how I could go through and shape and form all of my feathers based on the look that I'm looking for and the work that I'm doing with the feathers. We'll bring this over this way here 
and we'll bring that back that way. Now these feathers are all set up as brushes and draw and actually we've got quite a number of these hand drawn feather brushes set up in the brush packs so that you can create really cool feather style designs and effects very easily. Now looking at something like this I'll go ahead and select all of these and then right click on these and select order and select back to page and we'll select OK on the layer. So now I've got that feather look going on there. But let's say I don't like that. Let's say I want to take a look at something else, a different look or a feel with this particular design. Got another shape here and this is coming from the brush pack also. We're going to go ahead and convert this to a brush here. I can take this, bring this over. I'm just going to call this shape because that's really all it is, a shape brush. And working with the shapes gives us the ability also to create some really incredible looks. I'm going to go ahead and lasso as much as I can of these wing feather strokes here and I'm going to go ahead and shift make sure I've got just those selected and if we come back to my artistic media tool and the other things we can do when working with brushes is we can swap out different brushes to see how different looks look once I've set that up as feather stroke but I want to see if it looked what it looked like with shape strokes there you can see I converted that to shapes and I've got a really cool look going on there and I could come in here very quickly and easily and do a lot of adjustments to this to tweak what's going on with the design and that's not where I want to go with that, but we can go ahead and fix that really easily and start to form this particular shape to the design. So you can see, just working here, now I got a hold of my line instead of my node there. I want to hit Control Z, make sure I've got this node here and bring this up this way. And then I'll go ahead and zoom out. Now you can see we've got a really cool effect going on there with that shape and we just swapped out our feathers for a shape. So you can see how working with brushes gives us a lot of creativity that we don't have with our clip arts and our design packs and most of the media assets that we have in the market today. And that's why I want to be able to work with these brushes because we can go in very quickly, very easily do a lot of custom and tweaking work with the brushes. We can also do a lot of upselling. If a client comes in with just a standard logo design or something like that, we'll get into some of this in the tutorials throughout the series, you can go in with some brushes, just add some quick design elements to a client's design the way they've got it set up. Show them the design they want and say, this is what you asked for, but here's a design that we added some different elements to and it, we think it looks a little bit better and say to the client, but which one do you like better? Well, eight or nine times out of 10, the client's going to like the one that you added some effects to and dressed up a little bit. And obviously at that point, you can come back with, you know, this one looks a little bit better. It's a little bit more work to print. It's going to cost you an extra dollar or two a shirt for this one. But you'll find that eight or nine times out of ten, the client's going to say, you know what, even though it's an extra two dollars a shirt, I want to go with a better piece of art. Because your clients, no matter who they are, nine times out of ten, they're buying art on garments. And they don't know what their design options are. And you having the correct tools, brushes, filters, textures, plugins, all of those things, is what's going to empower you to present to your clients their options relating to graphic design and how well the art can look on their custom apparel. So we'll go ahead and wrap in this first session here. And we'll continue in the secrets of brush design with CorelDRAW in our next session.